and here is where we explore context, versus Van Sertimus, out of context picture. So what do we really know about Monument F of Tres Sal Poetes? It is made of basalt, possibly carved with jade tools, which means, the smaller the sculpture, the less fine the details will be. It is much smaller than the colossal heads, and its facial carvings, much more primitive. We have a vague outline of a face and of a possible hairline that ends in what looks like a flat top. The pudgy face is not clearly outlined and the carving is crude. It is in a prone position that could be for sacrifice or indicate that he is a prisoner. We really can only guess. His facial features are actually not like any Nilotic or Niger Congo populations. The face is much too flat, and the brow line is way too pronounced. If we look at artwork from Nigeria and Benin, we clearly see that peoples in that region did not depict themselves with flat pudgy faces with pronounced brow ridges. We do see similar features with flat faces and pronounced ridges in local Native American populations that also have the broad nose and thick lips, albeit, not as pronounced as the crude carving of Monument F. We see much more detailed facial carvings in jade, and clay, of that era. Monument F does not give us that clarity. We could also claim that Monument F depicts an Australian Aborigine, especially with the pronounced brow ridges, or maybe a Polynesian, but all this would be conjecture. Claiming the hairstyle is an afro without any clear indication of either curly, frizzy or tightly coiled hair patterns is pure conjecture. First we need to figure out if the statue is unique, or if it fits within a pattern. Monument F is a being that protrudes from a block configuration, where the arms and head extend in a prone position. The top of the head actually shows a hollow cavity indicating a possible sacrificial altar. Strike one for the assumption of an afro. Have we seen this configuration before? Yes. Monument G, Atreus saw Poetes, and the so-called monkey staring at the sky. Monument G, is very deteriorated, but monkey is not. Monkey clearly shows a similar prone position, once it has been laid down, and similar flat top with a widow's peak. So is monkey really an African man as claimed by some? Well, one clear indication he is not human is his ear. It is pointy, like that, of a monkey. Anthropomorphic animals have been seen in Olmec art many times before. We are well acquainted with were jaguars. In fact, a very similar sculpture has been attributed to a were jaguar. It could be where jaguars are seen everywhere. But looking at so-called monkey looking at the sky, and looking at a few other anthropomorphic figures with similar flat tops, protruding mouths and widow's peak hairlines, we may be looking at anthropomorphic monkeys as well. After all, we have no idea how the Olmec would have visualized humanized monkeys, but we do know many variations of how we have envisioned them ourselves, and a crude translation of any of them to a basalt carving could produce similar sculptures. Even if the Olmec were trying to just depict a human, how can we be sure a widow's peak in a crude sculpture is somehow an afro? Widow's peaks do occur in some Native Americans, so how would you depict those widow's peaks in a crude basalt carving? Furthermore, we have depictions that clearly show both the broad features, the widow's peak and straight-haired ponytail sprouts sticking out. Ultimately, people are just making guesses based on superficial similarities. Okam's razor still rules. If local explanations fit, why go to another continent to find an explanation, unless you are ethnocentrically biased? If I were Afrocentric, I could find much better sculptures to make superficial claims, with narrower more West African art-looking faces, they would still be explainable by polytypicity.